I created three tutorials on AI text to image generators and some of you mentioned in the comments the importance of prompting to which I completely agree. So I did some research on mid journey prompting so you don't have to and I discovered five amazing tips to take your prompt game to another level and I'm going to share them with you because I like you. In this video I'm going to show you how to use images as prompts so you don't have to type a prompt, the right way to separate concepts, which is not a comma, how to give more or less importance to some elements in your prompts, how to exclude unwanted elements from your images, and a simple parameter to generate images with a more illustrative style. So if you are ready for these amazing five mid-journey prompt tips, stay watching and let's go to my computer! The first tip is to use images as prompts. This is pretty easy and I really really love it because you can get amazing results with it. Okay, so when you are in mid journey, you're gonna type slash blend and then select this option right here. You can upload two to five images. So you will have by default the two images option right here. But if you wanted to add more, you can click here and then you will be able to add more images to this blend option. So let's say that I want to add three images. Now I'm able to upload three images. Let me delete the third one because I just want to work with two photos. I'm going to click here and then I'm going to select one of the photos. This one, it is this dog that I created directly from Mid Journey. And then I'm going to upload a second photo, which is a field with flowers that I also created in Mid Journey. Once you have your images uploaded, hit enter and we're gonna wait for mid journey to blend these two images into one. We have our image or our blend ready and let me show it to you. I think this result is pretty pretty cute and I was really not expecting this because I didn't know how mid journey was going to blend these two images and create a cohesive image. I think this is a great one but <laughs> not every time this feature works or I guess it depends on the images that you select because I tried creating one blend of a photo of myself and a photo of a jellyfish. Let me show you the two images and then let me show you the result because I believe it wasn't the best. So let me type blend and let me show you the two images that I used. I used this one which is an okay photo I believe is not the best selfie ever and I was expecting mid journey to do something beautiful with it. <laughs> the second image that I used it was this one so I thought oh mid journey is very powerful and it's going to create something very cool with these two images. Do you want to see what mid journey created for me? This is what mid journey came up with it. I don't know if mid journey was trying to make fun of me or what happened there but I mean <laughs> what is this? The second tip is going to take your prompts to another level. In the past, before doing my research, I believed that adding a comma in between two concepts was good enough to separate the two concepts. So let's say I'm gonna type imagine and then I'm gonna type dragon. So I expect a dragon to appear, then comma and then fly to add an element of flying or air or anything like that. I hit enter and then what mid journey is going to bring back is a dragonfly. Not a dragon, not something flying, but a dragonfly. And this happens because mid journey considers these two concepts as just one thought. And this is why we need to be careful with the way we craft our prompts. Adding a double column in between the two concepts will indicate mid journey that these two concepts should be considered as different elements. So let me show you again. This is the image that mid journey gave me back after I typed dragon coma fly. We got images of dragonflies. But let me show you what happens when I type imagine and then dragon a double colon 
and then fly. And this is the image that we get when we add the double column. Here we see images of dragons and I see that some of them have extended wings. So this makes me think that flying is illustrated with the extended wings. Here's another example of the same prompt but without the comma and without the double column. We simply have dragon space fly and this is what we get dragonflies and just one last example for this section because i am a very visual person and i believe it is important to show you the difference it is a hot dog when you type hot dog versus hot double colon dog we have the food and then we have a dog that is warm the third tip is going to help you if you want to give importance to certain elements in the image you want to generate. So for example, this image. I wanted to create a mermaid with colorful fish. In these images, I can see that the mermaid has some importance because she's in the middle of the image but the fish are big enough for me to tell me that they play a important role in the image. But what happens if you want to create an image that focuses more on the mermaid rather than the fish? In this case, you would like to type slash imagine. You're gonna type mermaid with colorful fish and we are going to add double colon to separate both concepts so mermaid double colon and then after colorful fish double colon now we're going to add different weights to the two concepts that we have in here in order to give more importance to the mermaid so i'm going to add a number five next to the mermaid and a2 next to the colorful fish. This means that the concept mermaid weights more than the fish. Now let me hit enter and see what mid journey brings me back. My image is ready and I believe we see that the mermaid has more importance in these images. We still see big fish but we see less fish than in the previous image. In this image we see some fish in the background but we don't see any fish in the front of the image. In this image we still see fish because I asked my journey to add fish but I believe that the head of the mermaid is occupying more space than the fish. And in this image we see that the mermaid is the main character of the image. So I believe adding different weights to the two concepts worked. And now let's see what happens if I add more weight to the colorful fish. Let's go to imagine. I'm going to paste my prompt and I'm going to change the values. Mermaid 2 and colorful fish 5. I expect this image to emphasize more on the fish, less on the mermaid. So let's see what Mid Journey creates for us. The images are ready and this is what Mid Journey came back with. I believe it actually added more importance to the fish. We see here that the fish is in front of the mermaid so that is a way to add importance to the fish in the other images we also see the fish in front of the face of the mermaid and we see a lot of bright vivid colors on the fish rather than on the mermaid faces so i believe this way of writing prompts adding weight to certain elements on your image is extremely powerful because you can actually guide mid journey on how to craft the image. The fourth tip is a parameter that will help you exclude unwanted elements. This one is pretty simple and it is a dash dash no. Let me show you an example. I asked mid journey to create a rose with thorns. This is what mid journey came back with and I saw that in three of the images the rose has green leaves. This is something that I don't need or I don't want in my image so I 
asked again Midjourney to create a rose with thorns, but this time I added the special parameter dash dash no and then the keyword that I want to exclude from my image. And as you can see from the results, Midjourney understood perfectly the prompt. We see roses with thorns and without the green leaves. I want to show you something else related to this parameter dash dash no and it is that you can also add a keyword double colon and then minus 0.5 in order to tell Midjourney to exclude this element or this color, in this case, red. We have this example of a vibrant tulip fields and you can see that we have a range of different colors on these tulips and we see a lot of red. On the second image, we have exactly the same prompt vibrant tulip fields. In this case, we are separating this concept with a double colon and then adding an extra concept, which is red, double colon minus 0.5 to indicate that we want a vibrant tulip field without the red color. And as you can see on this image, we almost don't see red. I do see it, but we see it in less quantities. So I just wanted to show you this because this parameter works Works, but not a hundred percent on all of the requests. So just have this into consideration. Midjourney is known for their powerful, realistic looking images. But what about if you need or if you want to generate images with animate aesthetic or illustrative styles? Well, Midjourney has a model called Niji and to activate it, you are going to type the parameter dash dash Niji. Here is an example. I typed mermaid with colorful fish dash dash Niji. Now let me show you the Niji model into action. Here I have the result of a mermaid with colorful fish that I asked Midjourney. And this is the images that Midjourney came back with after I typed mermaid with colorful fish dash dash Niji. The dash dash Niji is activating the animate aesthetic or illustrative style. So you can see that by just adding this little parameter, the results can be quite different. In my opinion, this model is not as strong as the images generated by default in Midjourney, but I thought it was important to mention it as I believe this model will only get stronger and better with time. So it may happen that by the time you are watching this tutorial, this parameter works wonders. So who knows? And I just wanted to share with you guys that it took me a complete day to do the research for this tutorial. So I I just wanted to know if you found these five tips valuable and which one you liked the most. Please let me know in the comments and by the way you can also let me know if you want me to give you tips on how to prompt chat GPT. That is something that I also find quite fascinating. So if you are interested only, if you are interested, please let me know in the comments. And if I see that many of you are interested in that topic, I can take the time to do the research and create a tutorial for you guys on that topic. Check out this tutorial right here where Ronnie shows us the power of chat GPT and Canva combined. Remember to subscribe to the channel to keep learning with us and remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I guess this is it for today and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye!